Hello, welcome to the first session of the block printing course. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple printing block um, using hopefully um, materials that you can easily get hold of and also we're going to be exploring repeat pattern and colour. Hello, before we start and I'll show you how to make a printing block, I'm just going to show you a few samples of some that I've done earlier. See this one is done using a few different leaf shapes and some berries on one block. This one, as you can see, is based on a pear. This one's based on sort of seed pod type shape with some leaves, quite stylized. This one's just an interesting pattern. And some leaves. And then I've got some Christmas tree designs that were for Christmas cards and a little, little bird. Now the materials you're going to need to make your printing block, you're going to need some thick card, I'm using mount board here, but anything that's quite rigid, or you can even, if you haven't got any really thick card, you can even glue a few pieces together, So, or you could use a thin piece of wood if you want to make um, a, another printing block, would be just great. And we're going to be using craft foam to actually make your design with, so it's very soft and flexible. Um, easily available in craft stores um, and the lovely thing about this is that you it's so soft that you can just um, all your design you're going to just score your design by using um, a biro pen basically so you're going to make your basic shape and all the design marks that you're going to create are just made by going over and over and scoring it basically using a pen um, so that you can actually feel the marks with your finger and thumb. So they need to be quite deep. But the nice way about doing that is you can put quite a lot of detail on without um, worrying too much about having to cut like um, having to cut or anything, um, which makes it much, much simpler. I'll just show you a couple of other ones I've got here. This is another one so you're done with using the leaves. Um, and I'll show you the one with the little bird. There, so you can still see. So all of these, just cut out the simple shape, and then you actually just do all of this, which I will obviously demonstrate and show you in a moment, um, but it's quite easy, which is great. So you can put quite a lot of detail on um, fairly simply. The other thing you're going to need, obviously, is something to stick your foam onto your card with, or your wood um, block. Um, I, we tend to use in our classes, we tend to use double sided tape, which is again easily available and works really well. It's nice and easy to use. You'd, um, and or if you haven't got any of that, very strong glue will be fine. Um, it needs to be a glue that will um, not obviously peel away when, when your block gets damp. If you are going to be using glue, I would suggest that when you stick your um, foam onto your card or your piece of wood, you leave, probably leave it overnight to dry so it's a bit stronger. Okay, so now we're going to talk about doing some designs. So before you start thinking about making a block print, a block um, printing block, we're going to need to obviously think about what designs you'd like to create. So it's a good idea to almost doodle and have a little bit of a play on a piece of paper, but maybe keep into a theme. So here I've explored some different flower shapes and some leaves. Um, on this one, I've explored um, similar designs. I've got created a similar shaped leaf, but decide you know thinking about different ways. Um, it might be nice to make a block using those leaf, those simple leaf shapes. Um, and this one's just exploring um, is sort of some bird designs and how you know you can do a variation on a theme. So you want to sort of play around, I would say, for a little while and create some different designs. You could look online, you can look in books. Um, the colouring books that you, the, the adult colouring books are actually very very good idea for. Um, inspiration actually they have some lovely designs in there you can always copy or trace something out out of one of those right so now thinking about making your block so when you are happy with a design and you decide you watch what you would like to use for your block printing design um, what you would need to do is get your craft foam and what you're going to need to do is actually put on your double-sided tape on the back before you cut it out. That makes it much, much easier. Um, the reason being, I'm just going to show you a slightly bigger one. Let's put it, this one on here. 
So if you have a piece of foam, put your double-sided tape on, or you can cut out a small piece like I have here and put your double-sided tape on the back first. The reason being is if you were to cut out the shape, then try to put your double-sided tape on the back, it's very, very fiddly, much, much easier to put it on and then it's already there, ready for you to stick once you've cut the shape out. As you can see, I'm going to be also doing, I'm going to need a little flower, which I want to show you. I'm also going to be doing something like this, sort of leaf stem with leaves on it obviously this as you can see i've actually had the double-sided tape on the back of the sheet before i cut the leaf shapes out which would obviously drive you crazy if you're trying to cut do little tiny <laughs> little designs like this and put tape on um be very very fiddly um when you come to um do put your um design on the foam I would suggest you get a pencil, lightly draw it on first, then you can go over with a pen. Now this is, I'm going to create the stem here for my leaves. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very lightly draw, I want it to be slightly curved, rather than dead straight. Very lightly draw, I think it should be. The reason you're doing it lightly is because this is so um, soft, this foam, and any marks you make um, show up. That's why it's great to, for you, for this, you know, this process. But obviously that means if you make a mistake, it will show. So lightly first, then you can get a pen and you can then score. Again, I'd suggest you start lightly. And I'm now going on, I'm just putting that design down there. I mean, it's not so vital because it's going to be cut out this whole shape. It's when you're putting pattern on, it's a bit more important to do this carefully. So get the idea and then you would score, you would go backwards and forwards and score this really heavily like this several times till you can actually feel it with your fingers, that mark. And that was, that will make it indented so that um, you will then show up when it's printed as white white marks so i'm now just going to carefully cut this out and if you've got a craft knife and a cutting mat you could use those if you prefer just very gently cut that out i'm just showing you that and then obviously you're ready to assemble and stick onto your card backing so that's my stem cut out. So what I do, I just carry on cutting out um, the flower and then I'm just going to show you sticking those on. Okay, so I've actually taken the um, double-sided tape off and stuck stuck the stem and the leaves on here, press, just pressing firmly. Now this one, I've actually just cut out a little flower. Um, I've actually not taken the double-sided tape off yet, it's so just to show you. So all you do literally is just peel it away because it's got a sticky back backing literally to peel that off and then place it on you might decide if you've got a top or a bottom which ones and try and place it fairly near the edge of your card and then press firmly making sure you don't get your nails in the way and make marks with your nails because they show up okay what i will then do is i will then just trim trim the card just so it's fairly close to your um, design. The reason being, when you come to print, if you've got a big piece of card, obviously you're gonna get lots of gaps in between your print design, which is not really what you want. So I'll just cut these and then I'll come back and show you and talk about printing. Okay, I'm gonna start showing you how to start printing now. We're gonna be using um, acrylic paints, um, just ordinary acrylic paints. I'm going to be using a cadmium yellow, a magenta and two blues, a cyan, which is a sort of turquoisey blue and an ultramarine to create. This will help me create nice purples and this, this more turquoisey one's lovely for greens. Um, if you haven't got acrylic paints, you could use poster paint. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna show you, when you start printing, I've done one here, um, it's, Quite often, the colour builds up a little bit on your block when you start printing. So the first one sometimes isn't the best one, so don't worry. But I'm just going to show you now, thinking about applying colour. So what I like to do is I like to actually 
build up the colour and actually let it blend a little bit actually on my on my plate now if you wash your brushes in between please make sure they're dry if your if the brush is wet so your print's going to come out a little bit sloppy looking okay so you need to be a little bit careful i'm just going to put a little bit of a little bit of cyan blue here and i quite like letting the color start blending a little bit actually on the plate I quite often use my finger actually, I quite like just smudging it around a little bit with my finger and if you want to, you can actually, you need to be a bit, little bit speedy so the paint doesn't dry but you can actually apply different colours to different areas. I'm just going to put a little dot in the eye here. Right, or you could always apply the little dot later. So I always try and use the edge of my paper as a guide and put the edge of my block there, line it up and then you just want to press firmly and try not to move it otherwise obviously it will smudge and you'll get a, not a very nice image so pop that on and i always write on the back just write top okay if you've got a design that's definitely got a top and a bottom because what we're going to do we're talking about color now but then we're going to talk about doing repeat pattern designs after this so that's my second one playing around with color as you can see all right and here's a couple of other ones where I'm actually just playing around with different colour combinations, painting different areas in different colours can give you quite a different different look. Um, so that's the first thing I think you, I'd like to, you to play with. I say you can actually cheat and actually something like on the eye there, you can actually just pop that in afterwards if you want to, if you find it too, too difficult to um, start doing that straight away. Okay, so I've just done one more print here. This time I've added magenta, some yellow to the chest and sort of let it blend in to create oranges and then a little bit of blue over the magenta, get some little purpley bits on there. Now, when you've finished printing your plate, what you want to do is don't obviously put it under the tap because you're just on card here. So what you want to do is get a bit of damp tissue and just give it a little rub to clean it off. You only really need to do this when you're finished or if you want to do a completely, obviously, completely different colour, you need to give it a good clean. Sometimes if you're going to do a long run of printing, you may find that colour builds up in some of these areas and you need a little bit of a clean. The other thing you can do if you find your, um, it's getting a bit clogged up, is when you're printing, you can actually get just a, a pencil or a little, and actually just, just go over some of the marks like this to, um, if you think the paint's got getting clogged up a little bit, you can actually do that. You don't want to fiddle with that too much because obviously you need to print fairly quickly before your paint dries. So that's printing and playing around with different colour combinations. Now I'm going to talk to you about, as well as different colour combinations, by actually putting your um, block down in different positions, you can create some interesting patterns. Okay, I'm just going to show you some examples now of using block, block print just the printing block that's a pear shape um, playing around with color but also we're going to then be pl then playing around with how you position it okay that's why if you write top on the back is it's very useful so obviously this is just placing it lining it up one after the other now this one is obviously placing it again but then going and placing one in between it gives you a slightly different design this is obviously placing it and moving it so you've got one upside down gives you a different feel and this one's playing around with overlapping so you can see by just by playing around like this you can get quite a lot of ideas and different different um feels this is another example um again playing around with different colors painting different areas in different colors again quite a straightforward print playing around with one upside down to give you a sort of a mirror image then this one obviously moving it around to give you it's just sort of placing it like this so you're moving it around again gives you quite a different feel and imagine if that was on a larger scale um, you would actually build up a really lovely interesting pattern okay the next thing I want to talk to you about is combining two different blocks together so here we've just got the first print and then on this one, as you can see, it's combined with this block so that you've actually got 
two different blocks built up to make a more complicated pattern of design. Okay, this one again is using the first printing block, but then using this one combined to create a different feel. As you can see, they're quite, quite versatile by actually combining things in different ways. There's one other thing you can think about, and that is actually when you're painting your block, just painting parts of it and printing it, and then overlapping something else with it. And I'm just going to show you that one now. Okay, so now I'm going to talk to you about um, painting um, and combining things, but not painting your whole block. Now, these are the two blocks I showed, demonstrated making at the beginning. Um, now, obviously, I've printed these in different colour combinations, and what I thought I might try on this one is actually painting, but not painting the top leaf but then printing the flower instead so I can have a flower with a leafy stem that was the plan so let's see so I will just forget to paint the top one I'm just putting some yellow on here and then I'm going to combine a little bit of blue to make some shades of green so you don't want to put the paint on too thickly because you'll end up with a great splodgy mess but at the same time you make sure it's enough obviously there to get a print but you don't you will need to be fairly speedy because this dries quite rapidly so I'm just putting on a little bit of colour on the base of the leaves here coming off just to give it a bit of interest now so I've already written T on the top so I'm going to come down a little bit further than normal so I've got room to put a flower on the top so give it a little bit of a that one off there you go so that's that without the, the leaf on the top now I'm going to paint up my flower now I'm going to do pink petals and what color should I do the middle um should I do purple or yellow or I think I will actually this one I'm going to paint the whole thing through pink and put a little bit of blue in the middle so hopefully I will have a purple center there we are right now I'm going to try and print that here so I'll have a flower hopefully on the top of my stem I haven't practiced this so I hope it works Oh yes, that's fine. There you go. So you can see combining two actually gives you quite a nice result. Okay, just a little recap now of what we've done in this session. So hopefully you can see that um, just by having one or two blocks and playing around with different colour combinations of different ways of placing your block to create pattern designs, by combining one or two blocks together, um, in different combinations like I have here where I've only just painted part of the block and added another one that you can get a huge range you know huge range of different designs and diff, um, different ideas by just having quite a simple de design there will be a slideshow um, coming up at the end of students work to give you some ideas and inspiration um, also there's going to be this handout attached which is showing you different ways of actually placing your block that you can refer to to help you come up with ideas of creating different ways and different pattern designs. If you do do Facebook, um, if you want to put any of your um, work that you've created on the Facebook page, which again will be shown at the end, that would be wonderful. So we can sort of see, see what you've been up to um, and you can share it with other people. I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. Bye.